Hi, welcome to episode 7 of the Bowler Turners. As you can see, on my own, I'm in a different workshop. <laughs> um, so I'm now, we're now uh, doing pre-recorded um, YouTube videos and my dad, Spalter's Vase, the other side of uh, the Bowler Turners, has decided to step back from the YouTube side of the business and just concentrate more on his demos and stuff like that. He's still going to be teaching me, uh, obviously, as I've only had five months of experience, I still need a lot of teaching uh, to be able to get to a good point. Um, so, what we're going to be doing basically is obviously I'm going to be doing the YouTube side of it. Uh, I'm going to be taking the lessons that he's um, giving to me and essentially bringing them into my own workshop and um, just showing you what I've learned and obviously my own progression throughout this cracking uh, journey. Um, so yeah, that sort of gives you a little bit of an explanation as to why I'm on my own. Um, like I said in the last episode, my studio, my studio, well I suppose it is a studio now, I've been working on it all day. Uh, my workshop is tiny. You can see that I'm hitting the wall here and it's a very, very tight angle. I'll just take that and show you. You can see that there's really not a lot of room. So yeah, so what we're going to be doing today is uh, basically making a penny plate out of some burr elm. Uh, I think my, uh, got this from my dad. Uh, he he originally got it from uh, John Dempsey um, on the turn on Facebook. So yeah, um, yeah. So as you can see, a piece of um, elm is quite a thin piece. So what we're going to be doing is using a glue block and it's fastened onto the uh, face plate that sits into the seed jaws on the Axminster chucks uh, using hot melt glue. Um, it's got a little bit of a chamfer on the edge so you can put a bead around it and some glue in the centre as well. So it's slightly concaved to allow for a little bit more glue to get a good strong um, hold. Um, obviously the glue chucks have many different uses, it's brilliant for stuff for pieces like this rather than being scrap. Um, obviously just finding centre now with a normal centre finder. Uh, now there's a little hole in there in the centre of the uh, glue chuck that is basically so you can match up the centre of your piece and the centre of the glue chuck, draw around it which makes it so much easier for knowing where to put the glue. Um, so obviously once you've done that, make sure you put enough plenty of it on and make sure that glue is really really hot um, and now we're going to put a bead just around the edge and this just gives it a much more secure hold and you're just putting a bead right around it there um, and then after this you need to make sure that the glue goes opaque like it would be as a glue stick basically so on the lathe now it's going to knock off the corners using uh, the crown cryo m42 3 8 inch gouge ball gouge um, so I think I was running it at around 1200, um, obviously just trying to avoid any wobbles or anything like that. Obviously I've got my face mask on, um, just to be absolutely sure, mate, I always wear PPE, uh, no point risking it. Um, so I was going to take a few cuts, knock off those corners. Um, obviously this piece, you can see there's chips flying off, it's, it's quite dry. It, um, my dad's had it for a few years now and like I said before, um, John Dempsey had already had it taken down quite some time ago um, so we're going to go for a couple of push cuts now those corners will be taken off just to try and get rid of the rest and then leave a really nice surface as well um, obviously to reduce that sanding um, you don't really want to be sanding too much at least the way I've been taught by my dad with the tuition I've been getting off him anyway um, so again just keeping that bevel running and pushing the tool into the tool rest and not into the wood um, and we're just going to go for a few more shear cuts now and you can see those little bits that are coming off are absolutely brilliant and leave such a nice surface so I'm just cleaning up the face of it now ready to um, put on the chucking point um, I'm going to be using a tenon um, for stuff like this I just you know you can use a recess if you want to I just prefer using tenons that's a little bit of slow-mo action there with a the push cut going in would have been so much better if they if they were not chips and more curls but uh, you can only ask for so much of a piece of really dry wood like this um now obviously it's it's got a bit of burr in there it's not a huge amount uh but obviously you're using the um push cut to try and eliminate leaving any of the end grain sticking up or tear out or what have you 
as you can see there just about there's a, a mark now where I use my calipers uh, to set the width of my tenon so I'm now just taking the bottom of it round giving it a nice shape you can see there that little bit of a shape that I gave it I'm just creating that tenon now I'm just creating that tenon now um, giving it a couple of push cuts you can just see it coming in there now with the the C jaws um, on the SK114 chuck you only need uh, as a minimum really is, is a five millimeter um, chucking point or for a tenon anyway because there's a, a tooth just inside that really really grips on so as long as you've got it cut accurately which I think don't quote me this but I think it's about 59 or 69 millimeters uh, width um, and that'll give you a, an absolutely brilliant hold and as you can see another little bit more of a slow motion the cleaning up now with my negative rake uh, shear scraper um, negative rake is just basically obviously a normal scraper just with an angle on the top and the bottom as well this just helps get rid of those um, I mean for someone like me who isn't experienced at all um, rather than constantly taking loads of wood away with the push cut just to get a little bit away with the negative rake so now just taking away that glue block take your time obviously i've got this fast forwarded um so take your time with it don't do anything silly and uh, just be careful all the time with it and leave that little sense of it as well just so you've got that bit more support from the tail stock when you're taking it down now as you can probably see we skip didn't see the back of it being sanded but that was to do with the uh, camera being set in uh, power save mode so it turned off and i didn't realize so you do see the inside of it being sanded a little bit and then the um, colour change with the finish as well. So, so just cleaning up that face now and you can really start to see the figuring coming out. Um, again, you'll notice in a second that we'll jump a bit forward a bit. Again, the, uh, the camera went off again and unfortunately we couldn't see the hollowing out of the middle of this. But you can see a little bit more uh, skew, at, uh, not skew action, uh, negative rake action. So you can see there, it's sanding up to 400 now and uh, I'm going to be adding on some Danish oil and this bit is always really, really cool. Let's see that grain, a bit of oil on there just brings out the grain so well. And the next process will basically be sanding this in. Um, I've been watching a lot of Colin Way on the Axminster Lives on YouTube and Facebook and what have you and he, he he sands a lot of the oils in um, so I'll be sanding it in with 600 grit paper um, which basically creates um, essentially a little mush of the dust and, and everything like that that then fills the grain so that's it finished now so I'll put some pictures up afterwards anyway well that there you can see got a nice curve on the bottom dips in slightly there and you can see just there that little foot so it'll sit perfectly for a little penny bowl or penny plate sorry I mean I'm really quite happy with that there's a lot of nice figuring in there like subscribe the video let me know what you think about the uh, plate in the comments and how you think it went and uh, yeah thanks very much and we'll see you next time don't forget guys, we are running a competition at the minute to be in for a chance of winning both a blank of Unswalton U and a hybrid resin and Australian Marley Burr blank. Follow the link in the description to the video and follow these instructions. Subscribe to our channel, obviously hit that notification icon. Uh, give the video a thumbs up, comment win, that's W-I-N and share the video with as many friends as possible we'll be announcing the winner once we reach 800 subscribers which shouldn't be too long uh, obviously the quicker we get up to uh, 800 subscribers the quicker we can announce the winner